Blog Talk Radio. Franchise interviews from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Welcome to Franchise Interviews, an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Listen to interviews with franchisers, franchisees, franchise authors, franchise experts, and attorneys. And now, welcome your host, Marty McDermott, and Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 17 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs in one one I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and we have a great show. Where we're meeting with Atomic Wings CEO, Zach Omar. And Atomic Wings was created in 1989 with a mission to share authentic New York-style buffalo wings with the world. Now with dozens of restaurants open in the United States, Atomic Wings is setting its sights on nationwide growth. We're going to talk to Zach about that in just a moment on Franchise Interviews. So stick around because we have a great show. Franchise Teacher. Would you like to know how to franchise your concept or grow your franchise business? Meet the experts at Franchise Teacher. The goal of Franchise Teacher is to teach, coach, consult, and advise. The team of experts at Franchise Teacher will evaluate your business model and present you with a winning business strategy. Franchise Teacher will help you decide whether or not your concept works and if it's franchisable. Franchise Teacher is proud to have over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Franchise Teacher are developers of over a dozen franchise systems which include brick and mortar as well as home-based concepts of nearly 3,000 combined franchise locations. Whether you need to add more units or get more customers, Franchise Teacher can help. We will teach. Franchise Teacher will help you learn our proven system. Coach. Franchise Teacher will help you provide a game plan to succeed. Consult. Franchise Teacher will make sure you stay on track. And advise. Franchise Teacher will help you learn from our over 30 years of experience in franchising as both franchisees and franchisors. Take advantage of our free, no-obligation phone consultation. Simply go to FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561-385-3032. That's FranchiseTeacher.com or call us at 561 561- Three eight five three zero three two. Hi, this is Connie McDermott, Administrative Assistant for Franchise Interviews, and you are listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews from Eastern Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia. You're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to a very special edition of Franchise Interviews, where for over 17 years now, we've been asking the entrepreneurs one one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott. I'm the president of Franchise Interviews, and as we were saying earlier, we have a great show today. We're meeting with Atomic Wings CEO, Zach Omar, and Atomic Wings was created in 1989 with a mission to share authentic New York-style buffalo wings with the world. And now with dozens of restaurants open in the United States, Atomic Wings is setting its sights on nationwide growth. Hi, Zach. How are you? Welcome to the show. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. This is my pleasure, Zach. We always like to ask our guests, where are you calling from today, Zach? I'm actually calling from Maryland. Okay, good. Fantastic. Well, you're not that far away. We're in eastern Pennsylvania, so you only stayed away, Zach. So I can imagine it's pretty hot there today, isn't it? It is. It's been, uh, we've had some great weather lately. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, I want to go back to the, the history because this was an interesting story when I started researching your, your background and everything, Zach. So it sounded like you kind of like you, you started off in, in finance, you were like working on Wall Street. And then, you know, how did you come to discover Atomic Wings? It sounds like it's an interesting story. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I was working in Wall Street, doing IT sales, having found mm-hmm. my life, um, you know. And me and my buddies, we'd, we'd order from Atomic Wings from time to time. We were, uh, there yeah. was a location in uh, the financial district, and uh, we liked the food. 
I was, uh, at that time, I was also a Dunkin' Donut franchisee. I wasn't really active. Wow. I was a partner with my brother and father yeah, uh, at right. the time. So okay. we were partners there, and uh, they were looking to diversify. Uh, okay. You know, we were approached by many other wing, uh, you know, competitors at the time. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. really, we're big believers in, you need to like the food to really be able to sell it, right? Uh, right. You don't want to sell something that you're not a believer in. So yeah, okay. we tried everything else, and we really didn't like it at all. We didn't like the flavor profile. And we approached Atomic Wings, and at the time, the CEO, Adam Lippin, was uh, burnt out. He was a college kid who started the brand out of college. And, yeah. uh, you know, fast forward 20 years, he wasn't really moving forward, moving backwards, just mm-hmm. where he was. And uh, he was interested in selling the, the, the brand in 2016, and that's when I purchased it from him. That's amazing. You know, it's what's, I don't know if anyone ever pointed this out to you, Zach, because I, I thought it was interesting. I, I tried to do my homework before the interviews, and I said, so, okay, you were, you were in coffee, you know, originally, you know, in, in that business, which yeah. it seems to me it's, it's a bit of a, an addictive product. And, what, you know, when I think of wings, I mean, it's, it's addictive to me, isn't it? Like, I can't just eat one. Like, I have to eat a hundred, you know? And I said, wow. I said, it's very clever. Once you I said, start, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You can't stop after yeah. that. You know what I said? I said, yeah. how clever is that? You know? But it was interesting yeah. because you, you, you love the product, you know, and, and, and I think that's so important. But, you know, when I'm thinking of your, your business model, or I was thinking of Atomic Wings when I was researching, like, even, you know, the, the leadership model, it seems like a lot of your, your, your team, they were kind of like franchisees as well. So it's kind of like franchisees right. running a franchise store, isn't it? it, it maybe you can talk a yeah, little bit about that. Yeah, we're one of the rare franchises that are run by yeah. franchisees. Um, right. So we're very, co- we're very cognizant of, you know, uh, of the pain points that our franchisees feel. A, a lot of that deals with construction costs and, and building out yeah. locations, right? The initial, right? the initial startup cost is really what hurts a lot of people. So we're really cognizant of that when we, when we do our construction plans and, and we're doing our rebranding and things of that sort, mm-hmm. make sure that we're putting our franchisee, uh, you know, goggles on and, and right. you know, looking at it from their perspective as well. Uh, and yeah. that's one of the rare things that you get with Atomic Wings is we really do care about our franchisees. We're not just about yeah. uh, opening up locations just to open them, uh, you know, just to have that on our book. Right. Uh, we care about our franchisees. We know their families. And, you know, we try to be at every grand opening uh, if, if we can. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that's so important, Zach. That's one of the things that really stood out to me, you know, when I was researching your model. And here's, here's a little, this was, was trivia that I learned. I didn't know this, but I, I, I think I saw this someplace was Wings is, is it the second most requested item from like a DoorDash or Uber Eats? It, it, it is on third party. Yeah, I talked to the VPs a while, the, a while ago and, and it's the second most requested item on, on third yeah. party platforms, which is amazing after pizza. Obviously. It is amazing, um, but <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a fifty-five point six. Yeah, it's a fifty-five point six billion dollar market. Is it really um, that? Holy yeah, smoke! It is. I didn't realize it was yeah. that big. Over the over oh the last God. five years, yeah, over the last five years, we've seen growth of eight and a half percent in the wing industry. Um, so mm. it's a market that continues to grow. That's wonderful. With the, there's a whole history too, Zach, isn't? It? I mean, you, you know this better than I do. You know, with like the the whole creation of 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 the wing, wasn't it? It's so it originated it was it was in Buffalo originally, wasn't it? And it it, it sounded like it was like yeah. So our, yeah, our, and you have some association yeah. with that too, don't you? Yeah. Correct. My predecessor, who worked at, uh, during his college years, he worked at Duff's Bar, which, yeah. uh, Duff's and Anchors, uh, kind of like you're in Philly, right? Uh, so yes. pass and, uh, <laughs> right? They, they always fight over who created the Philly cheesesteak. Right. Um, exactly. so same, same thing with Duff's and Anchors, uh, is, you know, came from Buffalo and my predecessor, Adam, worked there during his college years. Um, and when he came back to New York City, he realized there was no good wing places in New York City. Yeah. And he yeah. opened up the first wing uh, restaurant in New York City, Atomic Wings, at that time. So we were the first oh, wow. wing brand in Manhattan. That's amazing. That's a, it's a great story. When you're, you're, you're talking about... When you're talking about Atomic Wings, Zach, to, you know, whether it's a consumer or whether it's a prospective franchisee, you know, and, and they ask you to describe, because some people might, if you were like at a franchise show, someone would say, oh, you're a wing franchise. But it seems to me you're, you're yeah. so much more than that, aren't you? Maybe you could talk a little bit about like what differentiates, you know, Atomic Wings from some of the other competitors that are out there. Absolutely. So first and foremost, it's, it's our product, the care we take in our product, mm-hmm. it's the, our flavor profile. Um, we're one of the few franchises, uh, and, I, and I don't know if there's any others, uh, that brine their wings uh, before 
mm-hmm. actually going through the frying process. A lot of people are just double frying their wings or par frying their right. wings. We right. brine our wings overnight for 24 hours before it even touches a fryer. Um, wow. Our boneless wings, our tenders, they're fresh, never frozen. They're hand cut, hand breaded, and hand battered on a daily basis. So it's cooked to order. I like to yeah. think of it as, uh, you know, we are a QSR, but you're getting mm-hmm. a home cooked meal in a fast paced environment. That's right. the way I like to look at it because we take care in every order. We don't have any heat lamps. We don't have any warming units. Uh, everything is cooked to order. So when you're coming to our location, yeah. everything is cooked to order. Everything is fresh. We've, we, we've, uh, you know, we've just launched our chicken sandwich line. We know mm-hmm. we have a Nashville hot chicken sandwich, which is amazing. Uh, wow. An Atomic Wings, uh, chicken, AW chicken sandwich, uh, honey barbecue chicken sandwich. So we have an oh, amazing wow. chicken sandwich lineup as well as our tenders. That's great, Zach. It's, and it sounds like you were able to streamline the process too, Zach. You know, I know like I used to like Correct. in the old days, it yeah. used to take, was it like 10 minutes or 12 minutes to... 12 minutes, yeah. Speed, speed of service. Yeah, speed of service. Uh, you know, everyone, everyone's a lot more impatient these days. So yes. we, we needed to figure out how to get a, a, our speed of service times down. And uh, we worked with our vendors and our equipment partners uh, to make sure that we're still serving fresh, never frozen, um, and we're not using heat lamps or anything like that. We're able to get our cook times down by almost half to about six minutes wow. now on our wings. That's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah. I know you. I know you work with your brother too, which I was. I always feel like at the, I'm always. I've studied family business, you know, and I know there's there's certainly yeah. advantages to to working with, with with family. What do you like most about working with your brother? I mean, he's he's always he's my older brother. He's always been yeah. a, kind of a mentor to me in, in some ways. But um, he know we know what we're good at, and we know what you know we're not mm-hmm. good at. So we know each other right. very well, right? So we can right. di- divvy up responsibilities, and uh, you know we we don't get in each other's way, um, which is the biggest thing. So uh, we kind of just you know our roles are, are are pretty much written out, and we have a great leadership team as well. Um, Mike yeah. D'Amico, who's our VP of uh, development, and mm-hmm. Michael Harmon, our VP of operations. Both uh, gentlemen who have great franchise experience for Firehouse Subs, and I've wow. uh, brought a lot to the company. What about technology, Zach? I know because you, you've been with the organization a while. You know, technology is one of those things that it seems like it's constantly changing. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to keep up. Um, how, how is Atomic Wings using technology today versus, you know, like 10 years Absolutely. ago? Absolutely. So, in the, yeah, in the past, we didn't have our own app, um, you know, yeah. and, and we've had right. to get into that space, right? We've created yeah. our own app, which, uh, which has uh, been doing phenomenal for us. So a lot of people wow. are downloading our app and getting loyalty rewards for it. Because what we realized is, we do get a lot of repeat uh, customers, a lot of folks that are loyal to us. Um, yeah. So we wanted to reward them for being loyal to us, and, and that's what we're doing through our app. Um, once they download yeah. our app, they can order delivery or pickup, and um, you know they, they'd get the points for that and eventually get a free meal from that. So that's, that's been a, a big thing for us. Another, another way technology has changed for us is we put our training programs online for our franchisees to mm-hmm. – uh, help uh, you know train their crews right. so their crew their crew members can go online now take tests take quizzes look at videos and, and get training so that way we're providing great customer service in our restaurants i know you also which i thought was very clever is is because i i've seen this done before and it's, it's very effective zach is, is it seems like you like to use a lot of like influencers as well you know to draw people into you know, uh, atomic wings mm-hmm. you know maybe talk how, how that's worked for you yeah, absolutely. In the age of, uh, you know, we're not we're not as big as some of the the bigger uh, our, our right. competition here. So mm-hmm. we have to be a little more, you know, grassroots. Uh, you right. know, really close to our 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 guests and our and our customers. So some of it's happened organically. To be honest, mm-hmm. some of, sometimes influencers will post about us and we don't even know, and we're like, oh wow, mm-hmm. that's great. They just order, you know, they get home after right. a concert, and you know, right. then they order wings uh, from you know DoorDash or Uber Eats, and you right. see our boxes on their on their phones. We're like, wow, that's great. Wow. Um, that's Amazing. But, you know, it's, it's a strategy that we've taken because, uh, you know, we feel like it's, it's a great way for us to get in front of our viewers and our, and our guests, our potential guests, um, as opposed to, you know, having commercial run during the NBA yeah. finals or, or right. you know, so right. we're, we're, not, we're not at that level yet and we can't, we can't yeah. play at that level as of yet. 
Yeah, and I, I think that's okay, Zach, because I, I think that's always like the fun part of, of you know the early stages of a business too. Because I know that that you do also like a lot of like you know local marketing. I, I remember reading that you you were mentioning you know one of your franchisees. I think it was in New York. You know, like I mean, they'll like deliver uh, atomic wings to like a fire department or something like that for free. You know what right. I mean? It's just I, I think yeah. that's that yeah. we do a lot of community outreach. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we do a lot of community outreach. We do uh, you know we give food out. Uh, uh, you know our franchisees are great at that. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. So here, here's a, here's a tough question for you, Zach. You might have to think about sure. it for a second. But so so you, you you've been doing this for a while now. Um, and if I were to ask you, you know, what what interesting thing that's happened to you since you know being part of Atomic Wings? I mean, is there any like one story that stands out over the years where you kind of say to yourself, "Wow," or "Oh my God," or "Aha"? Um, anything stand out over the years? I think it's a collective. Uh, it, it it continues to happen to me. Honestly, it's just. Yeah. Uh, the amount of folks that we've touched and the amount of folks that have come up to us and, and said, man, I love your wings. And, and it's yeah. everyone from, you know, just a regular Joe Schmo to, uh, to celebrities. Yeah. Uh, right. you know, we, we did, we did, a we did, um, a catering order for, uh, this Netflix star recently. Wow. And right? he reached out to us and was like, Hey, I'm a regular consumer of yours. And I love wow. your wings. And when I when I, when we hear stuff like that, we love yeah. your wings and we love your yeah. food. That really that it it shows you, hey, we're not we're not small fish anymore. Right. We're, you know, people right. people know about us, and we have you know we have some tremendous uh, momentum going here, and and folks yeah. really do know about us. Um, one thing that did surprise me is we did a brand survey in a in a tri-state area mm-hmm. um, with our with our competitors, Wingstop, Buffalo Wild Wings, and ourselves, mm-hmm. and it showed that in New York we had just as much brand equity and brand recognition as wow, the other guys. That's incredible. Uh, which, that's amazing. Yeah, which 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 was which blew my mind. And, and this yeah. was just a you know a blind survey that they did, and right. that was that was really that was the really aha moment. Like we have yes. something here, and yes. and we need to. And if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. So <laughs> let's let's yeah, that's let's get right. going. Exactly. And, uh, well right. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> let, let's get going and uh and and you know get the get these wings out here and, and the rest of the nation. I know, you know, it just seems like, I mean, you know, you go to the supermarket and everything is just so more, so much more expensive today, Zach. So I, I know like wings have probably gone up a little bit in price, you know, over the last several years. You know, I mean, has, has there been anything you've done to counteract it's, that? Yeah, it's, it's actually been shocking. Uh, you know, yeah. last year we had a reprieve. Uh, you know, we had COVID and, and COVID yeah. really messed things up and, yep. and prices were at all time highs. And, you know, and then we had a little bit of a reprieve last year where yeah. things had started to come down. Yeah. Uh, and then this year, it just took off again. And we're back at, yeah. like, COVID prices on wings, right, right, uh, right. which is a, ver- is a sticker shock to everybody. Yes. I mean, my, yeah. I went, I went, my wife sent me grocery shopping. And as CEO, I still get <laughs> sent grocery shopping. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not CEO in the house. But, uh, <laughs> but um, you know. And and I went and bought eggs, and I was like eight dollars for eggs. I'm yeah. like, wow, like yeah. what the heck is going on here, right? And uh, so we're, it's it's everywhere, right? It's the yeah, economy it we're is. at, right? It's the economy we're living in right now. Right. And some right. of the things we're we're trying to do is, um, you know, in New York we have a, a thigh wing, which is a dark meat wing, uh, and okay. not a lot of people are doing that. Uh, yeah. And we're able to give uh, you know savings on that product, and it's a lower cost point for our consumers. Great tasting product, um, you know, it's a breaded product. And, uh, you know, we also are running specials on our boneless wings and tenders to try to counteract some of the higher prices for consumers and give them some value. Um, You know, and and it's really about value. And that's what we want to provide here to our consumers. That's wonderful. I saw too. Was I, I? I don't know if this launched yet, Zach. But were you exploring? Were you like wor- working with like a new prototype? I'm thinking like um, having alcohol offerings in, in Atomic Wings. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. So yeah. So yeah. So we we ran a prototype uh, store out of uh, Greenfield, Indiana. Okay. Uh, and they're about they're about three months in now. So they're doing uh, beer uh, as well as uh, some spiked milkshakes, so, oh, wow. which is a pretty unique, uh, you know, uh, avenue to go down. Then, uh, yeah. so they've just launched, and uh, you know, things have been going well there. But we really don't have right. any data to, uh, you know, to provide right. at right. this point because it's so right. young. Uh, but it, yeah. it is something that we're we're toying around with. That, you know, as we get outside of New York City and Manhattan, our stores are going to look a lot different, right? In, right. in suburbia America. Right. It should sure. be a lot more different. And, you know, yeah. our Indiana location, for instance, has about 45 seats. Um, you okay. know, our New York City location, you'll be happy if you get 10. 
Sure. Yeah, it, right. It's just uh, it's just different. Where where, and to me, uh, you know, I like my wings hot and fresh, and the best yeah. way to eat wings to me is in the restaurant. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, you know right. That, that that's that's yeah. when you can really tell the quality of the wing and, mm-hmm. and the flavor profile. Not not when it's been you know inside of a you know it delivered for thirty or forty five minutes. Not right. that they're not good, but. It's right. just a lot better in store. So our, our Suburbia America stores are going to look a lot more, you know, they're going to have a lot more dining uh, options for our consumers. Yeah, and I thought, you know, even with beer and wings kind of complement each other, don't they? I mean, for me, they did anyway, yeah, you know. Yeah. It was just, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> football nice games, compliment. basketball games, sports. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're like great, great together, together, you know, like bread and yeah, butter. Yeah, the, you know? the two just go together. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So it does, and and it, we were, it, you know, we were, you know, in New York City, we didn't really have the space to do that. Uh, right. We really didn't have the space to incorporate right. that. But, you know, outside of New York City, uh, we, you know, we, we're, uh, that's the model that we're, uh, we're pursuing in, in some of these locations. What do you? Um, what's what's most important to you um, before taking on a new franchise, Czak? I mean, I can tell you know just talking to you and reading about you. I mean, you're very passionate about the product. So before you you take on a new franchise, I mean, there are any types of characteristics or traits that that you you want or you look for before you say yes to an entrepreneur. Yeah. We- yeah, we want a hardworking individual. We want someone that's going to mm-hmm. be in their restaurant. Uh, we don't want any absentee owners. Right. Um, yeah. You know, we, we just don't feel like they'll have their uh, pulse on their restaurant and and what yeah. our consumers are saying. Right. To to make adjustments on the fly. Uh, quality is is really important to us, and yeah. our franchisees need to be in their restaurants to make sure that their quality yeah. is is up to par. Um, right. And and like you said, you know, coffee is addicting. Uh, mm-hmm. And and wings, you know, wings are not coffee, right? You have people right. that you have people that'll wake up in the morning and be like, "Oh man, I need to wake up. I just need to get yeah. some caffeine in me." I don't, I don't right. care what it is, <laughs> just right? Just get me coffee exactly. from wherever, well said, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. and uh, wings are more of a, you know, I guess a luxury item or or hey, yeah. you know, I feel like having wings today. So mm-hmm. we need to be the best, you know, in our yeah. in our department so that cus- customers are coming our way and they need right. to taste that difference between us and and our you know our competitors. Yeah, I think that's so, fantastic. So it's important for us. Yeah, it's important for us to have our, a franchisee that's going to be in their restaurant. It's going to be working hard, even if they don't yeah. have restaurant experience. We've had many franchisees that have come along that have not had restaurant experience, but they've had wow. the work ethic and the mindset, right. uh, you I know, see. to learn and, and succeed. Uh, yeah. We we do a lot of hand holding. Uh, there's a lot mm-hmm. of knowledge on our board, a lot of knowledge yeah. in our leadership team. We've been there. We've opened up restaurants. Uh, you know, with other brands, and yeah. we know what works and what doesn't work. And our franchisees that do listen to us, they, you know, they do a tremendous job. You mentioned about the training that you know you've incorporated some online training, Zach. I mean, so when you take on a new franchisee, I mean, how does the training work? Do they come down to headquarters for that? Like, how does that actually yeah. work? Yeah, so they're they're coming down uh, to our Indiana location for uh, okay. ten days with hands-on training. Um, okay. Uh, you know, so they're they're in a live restaurant. They're cooking. They're doing everything yeah. our our crew members would be doing. Uh, and then you know, on their grand opening, during their grand opening, we actually come down to their restaurant, uh, pre grand opening, grand opening for a week to help them out as well. In addition yeah. to that, we have our online training program. Right. Thinking of a typical day, so a typical day for an Atomic Wings franchisee would be different than like a Dunkin' Donuts franchisee, right? Because we were talking like lunch and dinner. Yeah. Um, it, it sounds like, it sounds like you know, so the, the busy times of the day would be kind of like, you know, I guess mid-morning to, you know, to, to, to the end of lunch, the day. Lunch and, and, lunch, and, lunch, lunch and dinner, like, you know, I would say, mm-hmm. you know, uh, lunch, your typical lunch hours, and then, yeah. you know, 5 p.m. till Midnight, two a.m. Yeah, you know, right, <laughs> right. It's that late yeah. night food yeah. too, isn't it? Like, yeah. I mean, really, like Correct. after hours, Correct. like you know, if, if something after like, hours, yeah. something like yeah. that, it just seems like yeah. it's it's it, 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 it's most of the day, you know, with the exception of you know, I guess people don't really eat it wings, you know, seven a.m. in the morning, you know, but you know, no, it's, no. it's it's, it's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I yeah. see. So, and, and I was just thinking of those hours, so it's it, it's it's a little bit different. Um, I'm thinking that you know, because because when I was studying your background, Zach, you know, it seemed to me, you know, that that you're a real entrepreneur, and you know, the the majority of our listeners, we call them aspiring entrepreneurs. Most of them have it in their their mind that they want to get into franchising, but it seems like you know, there's so much out there today. I mean, they, I've recently read like there's like 4,000 systems now in the U.S., which it seems like a lot, 
So, I mean, from everything you've learned up to this point, then what advice would you give to our listeners then in their quest to buy a franchise, knowing that, you know, it's a little bit of information overload? It is. Um, I would say do, do your due diligence. Mm-hmm. Um, speak yeah. to franchisees of that brand. Uh, really yeah. talk to them and, and say, hey, what did you like? What did you dislike? What did you think right. going in? I remember when we first started Dunkin' Donuts, um, um, my dad, great entrepreneur, uh, yeah. God rest his soul. And, uh, yeah. you know, he, he, he did everything, I mean, on his own. And yeah. when we signed up with Dunkin', and, and this is not a knock on Dunkin', it's just this is yeah. the way the franchise world is. It's right. uh it, you know, he thought, you know, in his mindset, he thought, oh, wow, I sign up for a franchise. They do everything for me. Right, and that's not right, the way right. it works, right? Yeah, and, and right. So, you know, you are, when you're looking at franchises, understand that you have to be a self-starter. You're mm-hmm. self-employed, right? You're yeah. self-employed. Uh, yeah. You're going to make or break your restaurant. Uh, right. And you're going to provide the, you're going to make the culture in your restaurant. You're going to, you know, they're your employees. Uh, and that's, you know, your consumers are going to, that's the, whatever you build in that restaurant, that's what your consumers are going to see. So yeah. r- w- the most important thing is really do your due deals, do your due diligence right. and, and right. speak to franchisees of that brand. Um, yeah. You know, find out what kind of support you'll be receiving mm-hmm. um, because, because that's yeah. going to be important for your development. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, so that, that's, yeah. the, that's the number one thing I would say. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that's great advice, Zach. So if you could look into a, a crystal ball, Zach, you know, whether the crystal ball was like one year or three years or five years, I mean, where do you see Atomic Wings in the future? I know there's a lot going on in the organization right now in terms of growth. Yeah, we have over 150 agreements signed. Wow. Um, so our future is, is developing those uh, locations as well yeah. as, uh, you know, signing on new locations. Um, I believe our five-year plan will be at um, I believe 36 units by the end of this year, and well over 50 next year. So we're we're on our way to being, uh, you know, over well over 100 within the next uh, five years here, and, and hopefully closer to that 500 mark. That's fantastic. What's the best way, Zach, for our listeners to get more information on Atomic Wings? Of course, it's a franchise opportunity, but even the product itself. Are there any um, websites you can kind of direct our listeners? There to? is, yeah. It's really easy. AtomicWings.com. Uh, okay, you know, good one. Check out. Check out. We've been featured on uh, on many late night shows on Fox News. Yeah. Uh, just yes. a couple of different places, but we have a franchising tab, um, our menu tab. So you'll find out a lot about us. Uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Uh, we're on there as well. That's fantastic. Well, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed talking to you, Zach. And I'd really like to invite you back. Maybe next time I'll have your brother back as well. You know, and, and, and we'll there you go. Yeah. Story. It That's was awesome. great talking Appreciate to you today, Zach. My pleasure. You too. We'll be right Appreciate back. Your time. Thank more. you. You're welcome. More, we'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Coming up in our next segment, we'll be playing a clip from our great quotes and franchising podcast right here on Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews and up close behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. And our weekly franchise radio show, where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisors, franchisees, franchise authors, experts, and attorneys. And don't forget to listen to our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. Hi, everyone. This is Marty McDermott, the president of Franchise Interviews, and welcome to another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising, where each podcast you get to hear a great quote in franchising. You know, it's been quite some time now since we've done a Great Quotes in Franchising segment. And for our new listeners, just what Great Quotes in Franchising is, is they're kind of like aha moments from our main show, Franchise Interviews. And I was recently listening to a couple shows that kind of like just fit perfectly together, which doesn't happen often. So this, the theme of this Great Quotes in Franchising podcast, it kind of goes back to the days of maps. And if you remember like in the old days, I mean, if you were traveling with your family, you know, I'm, I'm talking like 30 years ago, and you were going to, you were going on vacation, and sometimes you'd have to go into a convenience store to get a map, and you remember opening up the map, and then you could never get that map 
back together again, folded perfectly. Well, today we have what's called GPS systems. So the theme of this particular podcast is we're going to relate the concept of maps and GPS, or GPSs, to franchising. So the combination of two different interviews here, one is with Chad Harris in the Franchise Development Representative at Authority Brands, and also uh, Darren Guccione, who is the CEO and co-founder of Keeper Security. So we hope you enjoy this edition, and we'll see you again soon with another edition of Great Quotes in Franchising from Franchise Interviews. Take care, everyone. Yeah, I guess I'd like, you know, back to what Michael had said, too, is, is you know, again, the background We've we worked with so many different uh, various uh, professionals, professionals, right. uh, whether IT specialists, um, and as Michael said, you know, attorneys, investors, entrepreneurs, and ultimately, it's as he said, it's just following that system right. that's in place, that the one-hour heating and air system that they developed, the operations, marketing, everything that it consists of, and following it like just like a GPS, and yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, that's 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 the uh, the route to success. Yeah, I like that analogy, Chad. That's a, it's interesting. I've never heard the analogy to a GPS. That's, that's it's very clever. I was it was funny. I was interest. I was interviewing, and I can't remember what it was one of the tax franchises, but I was interviewing one of their most successful franchisees, and I, I said to him, I, I said, well, how did you become the most successful franchisee out of? And I think they had about like two thousand different franchisees, and he said, all I did was was I did what they told me to do. You know, and it seems so simple, doesn't it? You know, but, mm-hmm. but it's so true, isn't it? Is is just I guess finding that person, like 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 you and Michael were saying, to just follow the system, follow the GPS, and and you'll get there, won't you? That's it could great. be a discipline in itself that you develop, right? In that sure. sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great. How studying you is certainly classified as an entrepreneur. So, what advice would you give to them? Well, you know, I'm a, you know, my background is uh, engineering, technology. I'm also a CPA, and right. I've always had an admiration for franchises. Um, one of the things that I love about franchises, among other things, is that you can analyze the different franchise models that are out there, the brands the type of businesses, and you can quickly identify which ones are successful. And typically, you know, they give you a roadmap of what you need to do to execute. You know, when you start a business without a franchise roadmap, you, you typically don't necessarily know where you're necessarily going to go or wind up. And so you get a greater sense of security and guidance when you can pick a franchise model that, A, you know, fits within, you know, your goals in life, your interests in life, and B, you know, provides a really sound, you know, infrastructure for you to build a business with a great support system around you. Most businesses that are one-off businesses don't have that. So there's a greater sense of, you know, uncertainty out there um, when a, a business owner or an entrepreneur... Franchise interview. From Easton, Pennsylvania to Sydney, Australia, you're listening to Franchise Interviews. Franchise Interviews.